Hey everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today I've got a special for you guys. We're going to be taking apart the Zeiss Observer 2. Now this guy here, it's got a problem with one of the prisms that are up near the head and it's got a slight blur on one of the eyes and when you rotate the prism using this ring right here, it migrates from left eye to right eye and vice versa. It's definitely the exit prism. We're going to pull it apart and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. The tools that you are going to need to pull this guy apart, I use two very small screwdrivers. You can see them. They're tiny, extremely tiny. And I also use, this is what, a 2 watt number 2 Allen. The corner caps right here and right here, these are removable and this is the access to the entire thing. So what I do is I take my small screwdriver and I put it in the crevice and I lift it up slightly and then I use the second screwdriver to walk the lid up. I'm not really prying, I'm more so walking the two up and it will eventually pop. When it pops, just pull it off. Now here I want to show you guys, this here is our angle prism. There are spacers underneath the three fasteners. Those spacers are basically a calibrated leveling of your prism. So you want to make sure to keep the amount of spacers with the fastener as you pull off the prism. We're going to take our 2 watt or number 2. I'm going to take out all three fasteners. They don't go in very tight and they don't come out very difficult. Alright. Now do not touch the surface of the prism. It is an absolute pain to get it to that beautiful mirror shine. If you touch it, if you get a smear, if you get some grease or something like that on it, it's going to create a reflection and refraction of the light and it will not give you a perfect, crisp, clean Zeiss image. So here we have two lock rings and you can see the prism right there, the one that rotates, you see it? See how it goes around and around? So that little wedge prism is what creates the rotating image here at your exit. And this is where your binocular attaches. So the best way to handle this is make sure you have a very clean set of gloves. Do not touch the prism. And don't allow your drivers or anything to go into the housing here. Because if they touch, you're going to mar the surface and you might as well throw it out. There's no going back. This here is... This is a spanning nut, as is this one. It will adjust the tension between the pieces. And I want to show you guys that this right here is your release. See how it rotates? I release it. There's some clutch discs that are made of cork and laminated steel. And those are going to be located here, here, and here. And when you depress this, it relaxes on these arms on both sides. See how it presses in and out? So often you'll also have problems with these clutch discs. They will begin to delaminate for the cork. And when they start to delaminate, they want to stick together because the adhesive comes out. But this one has got a problem with the exit prism right there. And right now, I'm just checking straight down the prism to make sure that I got equal amount of light on both sides. And it looks pretty clear. So now I'm going to have to do a little bit more troubleshooting to figure out what's going on. You guys, just to be sure, the things that you have to know is these spanning nuts here, 
That adjusts the tension and it also allows you to pull this apart. And the way to adjust those is you get a flathead screwdriver, a larger one. You put it in the crevice and you rotate it. And by using that rotational force while the screwdriver is in the crevice, you will actually loosen it up. I'm not going to do it to this one because so far this guy here looks like it's pretty good. But let's take a look. Let's show you guys what inside of one of these guys looks like. Now this is another observer tube and this guy is messed up. This one is royally messed up. Here you can see the prism. This is the part that is in question on this guy. So it's a wedge. It's shiny on this side, it's shiny on this side, and it's translucent going through the wedge of the prism. So the important piece of this guy is to make sure it stays absolutely clean. And this prism here is really clean. I think I had a problem once before with a little bit of grease that got down in there underneath the sleeve. But this is a really good prism. I might actually put that one in this to test it out and see if that clears up the problem. Let's go ahead and pull this guy apart. This is going to be my demo unit. I'm going to slide all these over to the side. back there. I don't want to get the parts mixed up. Okay. Notice I'm using drop cloths, some sort of cloth. It not only prevents the pieces from rolling all over the desktop, but it generally keeps them clean and it's a soft dampening surface because you are dealing with very sensitive glass. All right. So let's go ahead and pull the prism off. This guy is our demo unit and I will go ahead and pull this locking ring out so that I can show you guys the clutch packs that I was talking about, which you release with this guy here. Let's go ahead and do it. Got number two. Man, this one's a little bit sticky. So this one I'm being a little bit more delicate with than my other one. I'm not really paying too much attention to these shims because they don't really matter. This is just a demo unit. I'm gonna pull off this other prism here. I'll actually completely disassemble this unit so that you guys can see what we're dealing with. Now these locking observer tubes, these can retail from four thousand to nine thousand dollars so they're not cheap and I don't recommend people just start tearing them apart I've done quite a few of these I've fixed them and this guy here is just my demo unit so it doesn't really matter okay. see the shims how they got this adhesive that sticks them on there and then you have these set screws here 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 and here which adjust your depth of the mirror Okay, so let's see, we have a couple things going on here. We got some tiny, tiny Allens right there, which are holding those rings. This is where it's really nice having a good bench top screwdriver set. Here and here. That's it. Okay, this is a .9. Very, very tiny Allen. There we go. So you can see I've got an Allen that I put in one of the holes. I put the other driver right up here on the lip and I rotated it 
and that's what broke it free. So now I can use the Allen to loosen up this ring. See that? Now these will adjust the tension of this joint. So when you're tightening it back down, if you got a loosey goose connection here, that's what you got to do. You got to get in there, you loosen up those two Allens, and then you screw this ring down a little bit tighter. Because sometimes you'll find them in the field and they'll be doing this right here. So you just got to tighten this guy down. Me, I'm going to take it all the way apart. You can see it's a very special part. Do not lose it. There's grease on it. Do not get the grease near your reflective mirror. Okay. Let's take a look at what we got going on here for these clutch packs. So what we got is it's relaxing this ring right here, which is relaxing the clutch pack. Okay, we're going to pull the clutch pack out of this guy. It's going to come out in pieces. You're going to have stainless steel and then a double-sided cork on stainless steel. And there's going to be about, what, 15 of them, something like that in there. So if you guys ever have one of these locking observer tubes and they've got really gummy action, like even after you depress the release, it wants to stay locked up, then what you gotta do is you gotta come in here and you've gotta pull these guys apart. There we go. You gotta pull these guys apart because what happens is the adhesive that's holding the cork will slowly leach out and it contaminates the surfaces. Like this one here, you can see how it's kind of a little bit sticky. See that? Now, there are ways of cleaning that up. I've had to resort to a slight bit of orange oil on a rag, cleaning each and every one of these sliding shims and its mating surface with uh, the orange oil. And then you go to 100% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and you polish them up and make sure that it's completely clean surfaces. And this cork. It's actually pretty durable. With the orange oil, you would think it would destroy the cork. It does not. So the only thing that's going on here is when you depress the release, it's releasing your clutch packs, which allows these guys here to spin freely. And so if it's really gummed up, you, you depress this here, and it doesn't want to turn, you have to come in here, you have to pull it apart, and you have to separate each and every one of these laminations and you have to clean them and do a good job cleaning. Meanwhile, make sure that you don't contaminate your reflective mirrors, save all your components. It's not a light job, it's very complex. Take your time and keep a very clean work surface. So that's the insides of one of these guys. I'm not gonna pull this guy completely apart. I think that this guy has got a minor problem it's going to get a little bit of adjustment. I'm going to pop it back together, give it a test on a Pentero microscope, and it should be good to go. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up, like this video, and share it. We're trying to grow this channel. I do appreciate the views. Thanks for watching.